Hi guys, good afternoon. Actually, good evening. Thank you once again for tuning in. So today, the topic I'd like to discuss is the House of Commons, otherwise known as the Canadian Parliament. And what I mean is the Canadian Parliament building. I could very easily get into discussing Canadian politics and the history of the government system and the nature of the Canadian government system, but that's going to get away from what I'd really like to talk about, and that is the Canadian Parliament building itself. Now this is in Ottawa. Ottawa is the capital of Canada. Ottawa is located in the province of Ontario. Canada has 10 provinces and crudely compared they're sort of like United States states like the United States has 52 states. Well Canada has 10 provinces and 3 territories. Hopefully I got that right. So Ottawa which is the capital of Canada is in Ontario. The capital of Ontario is Toronto. So the capital of Canada is in Ontario and it's Ottawa. As briefly as I can, Canada has two levels of government and that comes from the British North American Act of 1867 and each province has its own jurisdiction of issues it deals with. Now one of the big provincial areas of jurisdiction is health care and education. And the federal government, which is in Ottawa, uh, deals with other issues. Particularly, um, I better check up on this. Okay, so the federal government in Ottawa deals with things like trade, commerce, direct and indirect taxation, currency, the postal service, the census taking, national defense, which is like the army, the military, the navy, air force, uh, the federal civil service, navigation, fisheries, banking. Anyway, my point is that the federal government in Ottawa has jurisdiction over different things than the provincial governments, the ten different provincial governments. And uh, you can imagine that the federal government in Ottawa deals with things of a national matter, like international affairs, things like that. So my whole point is that uh, this building houses our federal politicians. It houses the leader of our country, who currently is Justin Trudeau. <laughs> Sorry, shouldn't have laughed. Didn't plan for that. And he's the current prime minister. I really did mean to laugh. I'm not joking, but I can't... Uh, take it out of the video now. Sorry. Anyway, so you're just looking at um, one level of government in Canada. And it actually doesn't mean that the uh, provincial governments are subordinate to the federal government. I know that's a little bit confusing for people who don't uh, or who aren't familiar with Canadian politics. Anyway, here's another image. And just once again, this is in Ottawa. This is the House of Commons. This is the Parliament building and this is where our federal government meets and I don't want to talk about Canadian politics, I want to talk about this building. Okay, this comes from the Canadian Encyclopedia.ca it says it better than I can. Parliament buildings Canada's Parliament buildings are home to the federal government in Ottawa. Designed in a Gothic Revival style, the buildings officially opened on the 6th of June 1866, about a year before Confederation. Confederation is when the provinces uh, united. There was four original ones, which was uh, Ontario, Quebec, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and then they created an original constitution in 1867, and that sort of began Canada as an independent nation free from the British Empire. That's not exactly the right words, but that's the basic story.
Okay, once again, I'm not talking about Canadian politics. I'm talking about this building. And already it's a little bit confusing because, I mean, the heading of this says, Designed in a Gothic Revival style, the buildings officially opened on June 6th, 1866. So that would have you think that this was built in 1866, right? Wrong. Read the caption of the photo. Parliament Buildings, Ottawa. And there are several Parliament buildings. I'll show you in a second. There's, there's buildings like over here and over here. And there's a library at the back and things. I, I'll get into that in a minute. But the photo caption says, Parliament Buildings, Ottawa. The new structure, built to replace the old structure, destroyed by fire in 1917, was designed in the modern Gothic Revival style. And photo by James H. March. Marsh. My point. And I really want to make this clear and establish, establish this point very well. Is that this original, this, this building that you see here, that is the House of Commons, that is Canadian Parliament, was not built in 1866. This building you see here was built in 1917. 1917, this. Okay, so once again this is the House of Commons, this is the Parliament building in Ottawa, and this building is the building that was standing before this was built. What I mean is that the official story says that in February in 1916 this building, which is the original House of Commons building, built or burned down. This burned down in a matter of 12 hours and was completely destroyed within 12 hours. So then this was built beginning in 1917 as a reconstruction. That's the official story. I find it confusing. This is why I'm covering this. Okay, very briefly, this is the original House of Commons building. The, the story title is A Century Later, Mystery of Parliament Hill Fire Still Unsolved. The caption reads, Firefighters tackle the fires that destroyed the Parliament building in Ottawa on February 3rd, 1916. Now I have a little bit of suspicion about these images but that's something I might discuss later. But anyway, here's another image here. Archival photograph circa 1917-1918 showing the reconstruction of the center block of Parliament Hill following the February 3rd, 1916 fire. And here is the library at the back of the building. Here's the House of Commons being rebuilt in 1917-1918 and there's a library section that was saved from the old House of Commons that was all that was left as you can see in this photo here. So I think the House of Commons building was over here and the library was the only thing that was saved from the old House of Commons building. And they salvaged it and they built the new addition onto the front. And folks, if you think that I'm uh, building up to a conclusion about this building, I'm not. I'm actually very confused at this present time and I'm just trying to work through this problem and show you the things I'm confused about. I'm really, I really have no conclusion yet at this point. So anyway, uh, check this out. Check this out. This is from Canadian Geographic, which is a magazine. It's very much like National Geographic. Throwback Thursday, Canada's first Parliament buildings. Here's what Canada's Parliament buildings used to look like. The original 
smaller parliament buildings constructed in 1865. That's what they're saying it used to look like. Hold on. Okay, so this is from a CBC news website. CBC is a little bit like the BBC. It's Canada's National News Broadcasting Corporation. Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. Okay, uh, so this is a CBC article. Uh, it's actually something I'd like to cover later. But anyway, here's a picture that the CBC is presenting of the House of Commons building that burned down. And this is before 1916 fire. But pay close attention, please, kindly asking, to the tower on this building. And now here's the Canadian Geographic magazine. And take a look at this tower. Well, if you didn't catch that, I like using the paint program, so I put the two images side by side. Okay, you can see I'm using the paint program. But anyway, this is the uh, Canadian Geographic website image of the Parliament building. And this is the CBC News Parliament building. Now, these aren't the rebuilt ones from 1917. These are both the pre-1916 original House of Commons building, according to the official story. But look, the towers are different. The towers are different. I haven't reconciled this yet. Maybe there's a rational explanation. But I'm just saying the towers are different. But if I take a look up here, it looks like uh, something's been photo edited out. Uh, could it be this tower here? So maybe this edit, this photo up top here, the Canadian Geographic one, was photo edited. Um, oops. Uh, everything on this building is more or less like this one, but the top here is is different, and then this fisheye hole, whatever you call this, looks like a miter hat almost, is different here. So I'm confused. Okay, so this is a website which, as you can tell, is in French. I don't speak French. We did get French in grade school, but I'm not fluent in French. And uh, this is from the University of Sherbrooke. Sherbrooke is in Quebec, where they do speak French, if you're not familiar. So this is a university website. I'll translate this to English. It's not really reading it that's important to me. And it's talking about some of the history. Now actually, before I started making this video, I, I wanted to start discussing the history in my video, but I started getting caught up in the different images. And I'm going to have to put the history on hold for a moment, so as not to confuse matters. So I'm going to click on this image just to get a larger image. <coughs> this is from the Philippine American Inquirer. It just happened to come up in a search but no matter, it's actually from the Canadian press and like a political science type of writer, uh, Jennifer Ditchburn, she actually wrote and her work was on the CBC website. I think this article actually, her name, Jennifer Ditchburn, shows up there as well. I'm just, I'm just showing you that I'm using uh, widely accepted sources like newspapers. So this is a common picture. I remember seeing this in high school textbooks growing up. I'll zoom in a little more. And this is actually why I'm making this video is because even when I was a younger person, I remember seeing this when I was in grade 10 in a textbook and other images. And I remember it just, it confused me even then that the House of Commons building burned down, a concrete building, by the way, or brick building, and then it was rebuilt into a very similar looking building. And I don't know what's going on here. Does this look like a photograph, or is this a painting? Does this look photoshopped? It does to me. There is a popular book on the fire 
on Parliament Hill. Unfortunately, I don't have a copy of this. I'd, I'd love to see it. I'd love to know what's in it. You'll see in the links that I left in the description below, I extensively looked into the history and I made some unlisted videos on my channel that you could watch if you wanted. They're, they're a little bit boring and it's just me reading. But you can see I did look into this stuff. And there's so many details that I could cover as related to the House of Commons building that I've almost become overwhelmed and I don't even know where to start constructing a video to discuss this. So, in the least, I thought, well, I'll just just cover what I can, whatever comes to my mind. During the first 1916 fire, when the first House of Commons building burned down, this image was ripped off the wall quickly in an effort to save it from burning in the fire. Okay, uh, it, it took me a little bit of searching to find this image and make sure I had the right one. And this is on Flickr, which is, you know, not the most reliable source, but I looked it up on Google Images and clicked on this, and I'm pretty sure this is the correct painting. It even had a good caption, and I'll read it. I'll just read it, what it says. Queen Victoria's Portrait, House of Commons, Canadian Parliament. Queen Victoria in her prime, a painting by John Partridge, 1842. This painting survived four fires. The first fire, the first in 1849, when a mob set ablaze the British colony building in Montreal. Montreal's nowhere, well, Montreal's a different city than Ottawa. I'm saying that for people who aren't familiar with Canadian cities. This is in Quebec. It's not near, it's not close to Ottawa. And, uh, yeah, so apparently this image was originally in Montreal and was salvaged in a fire in Montreal. Okay, the last in the original, okay, this is talking about fires, so the last fire in the original House of Parliament in Ottawa that burned down in 1916, thought to have been set by a German spy during the First War. And that's a whole funny story, too, like a cover story. You know, apparently German saboteurs... Okay, just so I don't go off on too many different tangents and make a confusing video, apparently just prior to the First World War, or at least before the Canadian forces entered into the First World War, uh, supposedly uh, German spies were accused of sabotaging the original Canadian Parliament building and burning it down. It's almost like if you've ever heard of the sinking of the Lusitania, which happened, I think, off the coast of New York. Don't quote me, but like that was the thing that got Americans all upset about Germans and, and got them into the... Um, hold on. Okay, yeah, so like the sinking of the Lusitania happened and it uh, drummed up support for the U.S. to get involved in the First World War. So you have a similar type of situation with um, the House of Commons building being burned by German spies. I don't believe that story. Anyway, that's what you're seeing in the caption here. So, on one occasion, to save this picture from the 19, from one of the fires, apparently it was in four, the painting was hastily cut from its frame. That's why only half of her crown is visible. See, her, her half of her crown is visible. This is actually the picture frame. This is not part of the picture. This is the frame, so it's like cut off. Queen Victoria is actually responsible for the construction of the very first Parliament buildings, as she is the one who chose Ottawa to be the capital of Canada back in 1867. Well, uh, I don't want to get into the history quite yet. You can see in the link below when you watch those videos, you'll see I did cover the history. But anyway, um, and again, don't want to get an off, on a, off on another tangent, but this image here, is this, is this painted by hand? Are there brush strokes? New Earth. If you're familiar with the channel New Earth, she covered such a phenomenon where a lot of the old, I think Renaissance painting is what she's looking at, Renaissance art, you don't have brush strokes in the painting of images. And there's a whole different explanation, and that's a different discussion altogether. Um, kind of important is there's this Order of the Garter that Queen Victoria seems to have been involved in. The Order of the Garter is actually part of the House of Commons uh, ceremonies when they open new parliamentary sessions. This Order of the Garter will actually be involved in some of the ceremony, but that's getting off track. 
Okay, as you can tell, I'm I'm making this video in pieces, and yeah, not everything's going to be tied in neatly and together. So I'm just going to show you why I decided to make this video, and one of the reasons is that I was at a used bookstore. Actually, it was a used clothing store, but it had a book section. And then I saw the book, and I started thinking about, yeah, this is actually a video I wanted to make about the burning down of this building, and I wanted to cover it. So when I saw this book, I bought it. And it's an old book, and it's from 1981. It was printed in 1981 by the House of Commons in Ottawa, and uh, the credit goes to uh, W.J.L. Gibbons, AMPA, and others, text by Philip Londi, coordination by Major General M.G. Cluche, and supervision by W.E. Pentecost. I give uh, credit just because maybe it's the right thing to do. But again, um, I'm all over the place here. The main thing I wanted to talk about, I sort of already addressed, and I did that right at the beginning of my video. In 1916, there was a fire of the original House of Commons building, and then a new building was built. So now I'm just going to go through some of the pictures and uh, see what I can say about the pictures I'm presenting. Just to get you acquainted, uh, there's a library on the back of the House of Commons, and it was the only thing to survive the original fire. And so this is the original building, supposedly, and this was the building that was rebuilt in 1917. And you're going to see some separate images of the library as we go forward. Here's a floor plan of the House of Commons. So this is the front entrance, and then at the back of the building is the parliamentary library that I just mentioned. Over here you have the Senate, which works a little bit differently than the United States Senate, but that's a whole different discussion. And then here you have the House of Commons. The House of Commons is really the, well, I don't want to say most important, but this is where all the elected members of Parliament uh, assemble. And then the most popular political party that has the most seats in the House of Commons will form something called a cabinet and the cabinet is the executive group so within the winning party they form a group of um, portfolio benchers that have uh, a government department under them and there's three elements to the Canadian parliamentary system. One is the Senate, one is the House of Commons, and of course we are a constitutional monarchy, so at the top is the Crown. Now I want to make a whole video discussing the difference between the Queen, which is the British monarchy and the British royal family, and the Crown, because they're two different things and most people don't know that. Bills are basically what a law is, not a law, a statute, different than the law, uh, a legal statute, which is, you know, what governs everybody is first introduced in the House of Commons as a bill or it's introduced in the Senate as a bill and these two can introduce bills to draft as legislation and they'll vote on it and they'll debate it and then it also has to go through something called royal assent which is through the Crown but anyway that's important because that is how this building is set up you have the House of Commons and the Senate. The United States is a bicameral system which has the House of Representatives in the Senate and the executive, which is the president. The Canadian system is sort of similar, but it's different too, and I don't want to keep talking about that. I want to talk about this building. Okay, again, this is the cover of the book I bought. Oh, within the last day, actually. And here's a great shot, I guess from a helicopter, from the air, which shows the House of Commons. So here's the House of Commons building here. Here's the Peace Tower. I think we said the Senate was over here, the House of Commons is over here, MPs, elected MPs, and then the library is at the back. Now, oh, I better start making another video. Okay, you'll notice that 
the roofs of these buildings are green. Why are they green? Well, they're made of copper. More recently, they've changed the color of the roofs. You can see that it's still green and copper up here and on these towers here, but at some point they've changed the color of the roof. Have they washed it, done something to it, they just changed the surface of it? I don't know. I don't know the history. But a lot of people are talking about the potential electrical nature of these old buildings, particularly when you see towers like this. So I just mentioned that they are copper. Now what's confusing is that this is the Parliament building here, and these are considered the make sure I get this right. This is the eastern block, this is the western block, and this is the center block. Really I've always understood it as just this building here, but I guess actually these buildings are included in the House of Commons. Maybe these are offices, but all the action takes place here. This is the, uh, okay, this is, this is the Ottawa River, and it flows through, and it's just cut off from the image, but there's the Rideau Canal, which, which flows through Ottawa, and the Rideau Canal flows into the Ottawa River. Here's the House of Commons building at night. There's a Queen Victoria statue close to the Peace Tower, and I've yet to investigate it, but there's a Queen Victoria statue in my own city that's very much like this one, and I wonder if it's the same mold, same statue. This is the Centennial Flame, and it's perpetually burning, and it's in front of the House of Commons. I mentioned Canada has ten different provinces and three territories, and they have plaques, which represent the different, I think, just provinces. This is a traditional thing. You've got the changing of the guard ceremony. This could be Canada Day. I'm not 100% sure. So this is taken from the east block. So again, there's separate blocks of buildings. This is the center block, this is the west block, and just like the west block, this photo was taken from the east block. I didn't capture every image from the book, just the ones that I thought were most interesting and important. So here's the clock on the Peace Tower. And they're, they're saying, officially in the official history, that this was built in 1917 in the Gothic Revival style. And it just doesn't look like a building that was getting built in 1917. But what do I know? That's obviously something I'm working to investigate. This uh, unicorn with a crown is uh, on the coat of arms. Just pointing it out. Interesting that it's actually in chains. At some point I'd love to get into looking at the symbolism behind the Canadian coat of arms, but that's for a different video. Okay, I mentioned that there was the library at the back of the House of Commons. This is the device <laughs> sitting on top of the library, at the cupola of the library. Now there's um, another image in this book that was sort of over this way and it's actually discussing the weather vane. So the wrought iron weather vane atop the library this year, this year was originally finished in blue enamel with gilded with a gilded finial. And this is a new word to me, but any kind of antenna type of device on top of a building whether it's ball shaped or an antenna or like a weather vane that seems to be called a finial so that's a new word for me. Maybe I should look for a definition. A finial or hip knob is an element marking the top or end of some object often formed to be a decorative feature. A uh, finial is also called a pinnacle. And boy oh boy would I love to start looking at these but that's that's for another video. Okay, so back to the images here. This is the back of the Parliament building. You've got the library. 
And what I was really looking for is like evidence of mud flood on the base of the House of Commons building. I'm not saying it's not there, but I'm not seeing it at this point. There aren't inundated or half submerged basement windows. Kind of looks like there might be on these uh, the West Block building, but I'm not exactly seeing it on the House of Commons itself. Okay, I didn't include the definition, but this is not the House of Commons building. This is either the West Block or the East Block. Not that important that I know the difference, but you know, look at these antennas. What if they're still on the buildings today? Okay, I confirmed by looking at the book. This is the East Block. Okay, so I looked it up on Google Images, and yeah, it actually looks like the, uh, on the east block today, I'll get a better image, the antenna device is still, still up there. Okay, what flag are they flying? Not the Canadian one. So this is an aerial view of the historic west block, so the House of Commons is back here, there's the library, so this is the west block. Now it stands to be investigated a little bit more, but it looks like the west block has some signs that the bottom floor window is inundated. A little bit. A little bit at the bottom. Maybe I should zoom in. Let's give that a try. Oh, you got, even got some bushes covering things up a little bit. Well, here's the House of Commons. House of Commons back here. And I don't know. You know are the bottom, bottom windows close to the ground? This is not the House of Commons. This is the Confederation Building. This is another building in very simil similar style, and it's close by. This weather vane is at the top here, and I guess it has to do with the first transatlantic flight. You can pause and read the caption. Okay, we have Mounties here in Canada. Um, kind of a symbol of Canada. This is the entrance of the center block. I'd love to know the meaning of um, these letters, CH. I'm sure there is an explanation. I haven't come across it yet. Allegorical figures at the top of the stairs in the main entrance to the Parliament building. This is a very iconic place in the House of Commons. You'll get a better shot in a moment but you'll see interviews with members of parliament or basically our, our politicians will constantly be having interviews in here and being broadcast on TV so this is very familiar for Canadians to see this entranceway I haven't looked into the meaning of these things but you know you've got this uh, what do you call this rod with the medical snakes I'm not saying it right I think you know what I mean okay so yeah this is the entranceway in the House of Commons and I don't want to get sidetracked talking about it, but you may have heard in 2014, Canada had, or the Canadian Parliament had a shooting where there was somebody going through the building on a shooting rampage, and the hero of the day in that event was Kevin Vickers, who I think is the sergeant at arms, and he stopped he stopped the uh, the shooter. Now I don't like to talk conspiracy talk too much even though I do read about it a lot, but I still like to keep my credibility for people who aren't necessarily into conspiracy sort of stuff. But uh, I'll just say it. The Canadian Parliament shooting was one of the biggest PSYOP, or botched, screwed up PSYOPs ever. So Canada has the uh, has that one. And if you look up the that video on YouTube, you can learn more about it. I'm not going to cover it. I already said too much. Okay, these are just the Prime Ministers in Canada. Yeah. Roughly equivalent to the President. Not quite the same. The Executive in the House of Commons is not the Prime Minister. The, the actually, the Executive, on paper, officially, is the Governor General, who actually represents the Crown. Most people don't know that. And yes, the Crown, or the Governor General doesn't use their power, but doesn't mean they're not at the top of the Executive.
Okay, I guess I will explain the House of Commons a little bit. So, when we have federal elections in Canada, we elect members of Parliament in our particular riding, we call it. And it's the first-past-the-post system, which has a tradition in British horse racing, and that's different than proportional representation, but that's a whole different debate. The thing is, when you elect the Member of Parliament in your area, they go to one of the, I think, 300-odd seats in the House of Commons, and the party that has the most seats within that party gets to form a smaller group called the Cabinet, which is actually the executive branch of the government in the House of Commons, and the most important member, or most important um, person on the bench in a particular party will be the most important minister, cabinet minister, and that person is the prime minister. I'm saying this terribly, but anyway, these are all the prime ministers. Now, uh, Sir John A. Macdonald was the first prime minister of Canada, and I'm just mentioning this because it is part of the history. He was born in Glasgow, Scotland. He was a member of the bar. And, well, uh, I think I remember before that he was involved in the Grand Lodge of Canada. I thought he was the first Grand Master, but I, I, I think I'm wrong about that. I'm not finding that in the history. Anyway, here's, here's Sir John A. Macdonald here. So in the book I was reading, the mace comes up a lot, and it's a ceremonial object in the House of Commons. I don't think I'm going to try to explain it in this video. I'd have to digest a little bit more myself to be able to re-explain it. But there's a lot of images of it. The only thing I will say is that this ceremony of bringing the mace into the speaker's chambers happens and happens by the sergeant at arms. That's what Kevin Vickers was. And this happens before they allow the public to enter the gallery in the House of Commons. So this is something they have pictures of and photos of, but you can't actually experience what the Sergeant at Arms does in the House of Commons until after he goes in and does a ceremony and does prayers in English and French. Here is the inside of the House of Commons. At the front sits the Speaker. That's the Speaker of the House. I believe it's one of the members of Parliament that gets appointed to that uh, seat. And he doesn't really act as a judge, judging other people, but he's a little bit like the referee. And when people get up and speak in the House of Commons, they always address the Speaker, who is Mr. Speaker. So you'll always hear Canadian politics, people getting up during debate period in the House of Commons, they'll always address Mr. Speaker. Up here is the gallery, like if you just want to, if you're a tourist and you, the House of Commons is in session, you want to come and watch, you can sit up here. This is actually the view from the Speaker's chair. So this is the entrance where everybody walks in and takes their seat. So this is actually the Speaker's chair. Now this is the complete opposite view. Now we're standing at the entrance and looking towards the Speaker. So there he is sitting there. Actually, that's a woman. Here's an even better shot of the entrance at the House of Commons. Once again, you'll have a lot of um, photo ops and, you know, TV and radio, well, mostly TV coming in here with their cameras for interviews. Um, this has a little bit of, like, vaulted arches and ceilings. You know, people have made videos recently on you know, the nature of cathedrals as machines or electrical devices. Well, uh, say what you want. Uh, the House of Commons has a very similar style, cathedral style to it. Again, this building was built in 1917. That's what they're saying. Maybe I'll read some of these captions. Top, the speaker reads the prayers at the commencement of the daily sitting. So this is before they allow the public into the gallery. Bottom, the sergeant at arms places the mace on the table of the house. So the mace is really important. I'm kind of curious as to what these devices are. I don't know if these are like microphones. I'll let the time run out. If 
Here's just what one of the corridors looked like. Okay, this is inside the library. And imagine if you laid on your back and looked at the ceiling. This is what it looks like. So this is staring straight up. It's hard to really tell, but this is the dome. Well, actually, this is a dome, but there's another dome. And there's a statue of Queen Victoria. Here's the same statue. Here's the same statue of Queen Victoria. And here's the library. And there's apparently a lot of people who work here. A staff of 200, I heard, that actually prepare research for the members of parliament. That's what this old book said. In this day and age, you can imagine there's the internet. Okay, what's this? Commemorative sculpture? Okay, what you're looking at here is the different house in the parliament building. And this is the house of the senate, and you'll notice that the carpet in this chamber, or the senate chamber, is red color. Here's another shot of the senate chamber. Senators are not elected. They are appointed. I think they're appointed by the Prime Minister. And they used to be an appointment for life, but I think now they put a cap on age, and it's uh, till the age of 75. So the Canadian Senate works a little bit differently than the U.S. Senate. It's not really the same thing. There actually has been talk historically of getting rid of the Senate in Canada. I don't think that's ever going to happen, but it's been talked about. And there's been a few scandals in Senate of senators abusing the Senate and not showing up regularly and being on vacation and using, you know, the expense of being a senator and racking up bills and fancy restaurants and things. Okay, here's the ceremonial Senate speaker parade entering the Senate chamber. So just like the House of Commons, the Senate chamber uh, has a ceremony with the mace. And this black rod is important too. This, uh, I guess this is the, one's the speaker, one's the sergeant at arms. I'm not sure which one's which. But one carries the black rod, one carries the mace. I should really have read up on this a little better, but anyway, here's the guy with the black rod who seems to go in first. And here's the guy with the mace, and this is the Speaker of the Senate. So this is the Senate chamber. I thought I'd read this in, because at some point I do want to learn more. I'll read this quickly. The Arms of Canada. The Arms of Canada, containing the arms of England, Scotland, and Ireland, and the arms of Royalist France in the first and second divisions of the shield, and the emblem of Canada in the third division, symbolize Canada's national sovereignty as a monarchy. The emblems in the first and second divisions show that the arms are derived from the ancient kingdoms of England, France, Scotland, and Ireland, and also exemplify the fact that men and women of these countries contributed to the settlements and early development of Canada. So I think this represents the French, this is the English, I think this is the flag of Scotland, this represents England, uh, Amari, Uska ad mare, means from sea to sea. I th uh, the Tudor ro the rose, whether it's Stuart or Tudor, I don't know, but it represents England. The thistle represents Scotland, and I the shamrock here represents Ireland. The caption for this image is the opening of Parliament, about 1900. This is a neat feature here. I don't know what that thing does. This is, of course, the building that burned in 1916 and before. I don't know if there's evidence of inundated windows here. I'm not sure. So this is the interior of the Senate chamber after 1882. And again, this is the old building. I did try to compare this with the newer Senate room, chamber, and it's a little bit different. But I'd like to point this out. There's these um, devices uh, gas lighting. I don't know what that is, but it's hanging from the ceiling. So what is this? 1882. When did we have electricity in Canada? Okay, just a quick Google search that it says uh, electricity has been significant for Canada's economy and politics since the 19th century. In the 1890s, three firms completed the, to develop the Canadian Niagara Falls.
Okay, here's a Wikipedia article. The history of electricity sector in Canada has played a significant role in the economic and political life of the country since wide-scale industrial and commercial power services spread across the country in the 1880s. Well, uh, you could pause the article, but it seems to suggest 1881, 1883, well anyway, 1882, and the Senate chamber. You've got these devices. Okay, so I'll read the caption. The East Block with Sappers and Dufferin Bridges and the Post Office in the foreground. Uh, is that the Post Office? About the turn of the century, so maybe 1900. Just taking a look at the tops of these buildings. Got some finials. Lots of finials. <laughs> Sorry, folks. It's been a long video. Finials. Okay, this is a picture of the House of Commons in session, May 20th, 1897. Here is the mace sitting on the table. And apparently this burned when the fire happened in 1916, officially. Okay, this is the Privy Council Chamber in 1892. You've got the Dominion of Canada written on the wall. I think I mentioned this already, but I'll say it again. The Privy Council is... Well, I'll just read a definition into my video. Queen's Privy Council for Canada. The Queen's Privy Council for Canada, sometimes called Her Majesty's Privy Council for Canada, or simply the Privy Council, is the full group of personal consultants to the monarch of Canada on state and constitutional affairs. Responsible government though, requires the sovereign of her viceroy, the governor-general of Canada. That's the real sovereign representing the crown. I guess Queen Elizabeth is the figurehead of that. To almost always follow only the advice tendered by the cabinet. The cabinet is, again, the, um, the winning party's MPs. And currently, the head of it is Justin Trudeau, who's the prime minister. And um, the cabinet, which forms government, is actually, historically, maybe even today, are members of the Privy Council. And not only that, but they're members for life of the Privy Council. So I'm not going so far as to suggest there's a government within a government, but this Privy Council is a real thing, and historically it met in separate chambers. Uh, that's worth looking into. The Privy Council Chamber, 1892. Okay. Uh, this is a picture, I'll read the caption, early construction showing the west facade before the completion of the southwest tower of the Gun Governor General's entrance in 1863. Just trying to figure it out myself. Okay, so I brought it back to this image here. So this apparently is in 1900, and this, notice this entrance way, just pay attention to that. That entranceway is not on the front of this building yet. Now, I don't always believe what I'm seeing, and I tend to be skeptical and think that maybe this is a much older building. There's no windows present. I don't know. They're completing this tower. Okay, now that I'm thinking about it, of course, I am getting material from this book, but I want to mention that it wasn't until page 97 in this book, where it mentions very briefly on one page that there was a fire in 1916, and there are no pictures in this book <coughs> of the old Parliament building and the new Parliament building. So I can't reconcile that one yet. <coughs> and in this book, there's no pictures of the Parliament fire. They didn't include them in this book. They can be found on YouTube, or not, not YouTube, but Google Images, but you can't find fire images in this particular book. If you ask me, it sounds like they are trying to downplay the fire and not even talk about the historical fire or the fact that there was another building here before. And seeing as I'm on the subject, I haven't proven this. This is very, very speculative and it deserves to be looked into. But I sometimes wonder, or I, I'm not sometimes, but I'm wondering now whether there was a building here before just like this one, but maybe here.
Now, why would I be speculating that maybe there used to be a building here? Well, there's this eternal flame thing, which sits right here, and supposing there was a building just like this, but here, then I guess if there was a tower, well, it might be sitting over top of the eternal flame. But if I once again look at the old House of Common building and the new one, then I wonder whether, see this tower here, this one here, this one here, and this one here, and then even some of these towers back here. Well, I'm wondering whether they belong to another building on the back of it. Like, I don't know if this is understandable. But let's just say that these towers had historically a chimney like this on top. Just use your imagination. Picture a chimney like this sitting on top of these towers. Now supposing this building was sitting in front of this building, then maybe the tips of these chimneys are actually this building in the back here. Once again, I'm wondering whether or not there might have been a building similar to this one situated here. I could be wrong. And really, there should be evidence to show that. I mean, this was 1916 that it burned down, so there should be images to show the cityscape to show that that was or wasn't the case. But these are things I think about. Maybe I'm talking too much, making this video longer. Okay, these are just the last few images. Sergeant at Arms with the old temporary wooden mace and the present gold mace. The temporary mace, which is this one, was used by Parliament after the fire of 1916 destroyed the original mace, so this was a temporary one. This is not the House of Commons, this is the East Block in 1870, or thereabouts, circa. Just having read some history before I made this video, this mace, or maybe this one, uh, was a gift from the City of London. And just some quick details. Seven people died. And this is according to the uh, the Jennifer Ditchburn article. Seven people died on the original in the original fire on February 3rd, 1916. Of course, there is only a commemorative plaque commemorating the Member of Parliament who died, whose name was Bowman Brown Law. And Okay, well, I'm getting tired and it's time for bed. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you enjoyed that. And, uh, yep, thank you. A few last details I just simply had to squeeze into my video. So this is on Canadian Confederation. That's um, the first four provinces forming together to basically create the country in 1867 and creating a, the British North American Act, something like that. Anyway, um, I wanted to read this very popular and iconic image that most Canadians are familiar with having seen in history textbooks. So I'm just going to read the caption just to get this into the video. 1885 photo of Robert Harris, a Welsh-born Canadian painter. 1884 painting conference at Quebec in 1864 to settle the basics of a union of the British North American provinces, also known as the Fathers of Confederation. The original painting was destroyed in the 1916 Parliament Building Centre Block Fire. The scene is an, uh, is an amalgamation of the Charlottetown and Quebec City Conference sites and attendees. Okay, I'm not sure what I'm trying to say by presenting this image but apparently somehow it originally burned in 1916, but we still do have a copy of it, because maybe we have a picture of it. I haven't figured this one out, but something is a little strange about it. And it's been known to have been repainted, or recolorized. But, as I read in the picture caption, this did not take place in Ottawa. This was in Charlottetown, Quebec. Just something strange about these images, how they look sort of like a photograph, sort of like a drawing. I guess it could be a sketch. I don't know, just, just odd.